please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The union budget is upon us and startups in India have one key demand, clarity on taxation. Over the last few days, a slew of companies have been hit with tax notices. Most of these cases relate to fundraising by startups. And at the core of the issue is the angel tax clause that was introduced in the Income Tax Act way back in 2012. Now, according to this clause, the tax man is free to treat an investment into a startup as income if it exceeds the company's fair market value. The tax man argues that funding above market value should be considered income and asks why would anyone make a higher investment in a company if the value is much lower. Companies argue that valuations are subjective, there are different methods to calculate valuation and a company should not be punished if its performance does not match with the initially projected valuation. The big question, are India's current tax laws equipped to deal with new aid startups? Joining us now to discuss this further, Mohandas Pai, founder at Aaron Capital, Srijit Mulyal, founder of True Elements, Ashish Fafadia, CFO at Bloom Venture Partners, and Amarjeet Singh, partner at KPMG. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Uh, uh, Srijit, let me start by asking you, because, you know, there was a uh, tweet by Mohandas Pai a couple of weeks ago which stirred the conversation around this issue, and you've tweeted us this morning saying that you're being harassed by the Income Tax Department, you've been issued a show cause notice. What exactly has gone on? Uh, thanks, Shirin. So what happened is we raised our angel funding in 2015 early, and uh, we got our notice in late of 2015 telling that uh, the income, the, the funding which we raised is taxable income. Mm -hmm. And last two years, over 20 sessions, we have given enough proof to them that because our calculation method, which we used for valuation, yeah. was DCF. And we are in line with the projection which we gave at the time of valuation, and we are actually overperforming than the DCF calculation which was used at the time of issue of shares. Yeah. As such, you should not be considering this as income. Mm. But the issue which we are facing is the, the officers at the income tax, for them, startup and the DCF valuation, everything is probably new. Okay. So even the, the, the last hearing, I appeared myself along with my CA. So okay. she was, the officer was telling the CA that he taught me on, on startup valuation and all those. Huh. Okay. And they understand his book value method and that cannot be applicable on startups okay. because when we... So you're saying that they, they, they don't understand the way that the valuation uh, method is being used, DCF uh, uh, is, is what you're using. But Srijit, let me ask you this, because you're also one of the startups that was eligible uh, by the DIPP, recognized as part of that program. 4,536 4, startups have been recognized by DIPP. But I'm given to understand that only 74 have actually been approved for availing of tax benefits. So do you qualify to avail for the tax benefits? The issue is we also told the, during one of the hearings that we are registered under DIPP, so we should be qualified. But I don't think there is any formal notification which has gone down to at least to the person whom we were dealing with, and he wasn't aware of any such notification where we could get an exemption under DIPP. Okay. Mohandas Pai, you tweeted a few weeks ago, Srijit uh, Mulayal is now uh, tweeting saying that they are being harassed by the Income Tax Department, virtually sending out an SOS to the government. As I pointed out, I mean, this section was introduced in Budget 2012. The idea of the angel tax is not new. Why are we now seeing uh, more and more startups complain about this? Is this an unusually high number of notices that have gone out this particular year? Yes, very high notices have gone out. But the solution for CG lies in the fact that there is a circular issued in 2016 which says that companies registered under Startup India, mm. not the tax part, just registered, they will not have to, they will. They, they are not eligible, they are not subject to be subject to angel tax at all. Mm. I think you must apply immediately because you'll be eligible. Shirin, after the tweet, mm. at least five companies have got the assessments done. All of them are being harassed and all of them have got clean, clean, harass, clean uh, assessments in Bombay and Bangalore. Okay. I don't know about Pune. And I think people from the government spoke to me and asked me to explain. I explained to them. Mm. And some of them have just spoken to many commissioners in many places. I know Bombay and Bangalore, mm. where they told them that, look, you, sh you can't do all this. And they have withdrawn. Okay. In one company where there was a threat to add, 
they got a clean order just two days back. So I think people are listening. Okay. But there's a solution for that. In 2016, they passed a circular to say, notification to say, if you register under Startup India, mm. you will be, angel tax will not apply. This is, you should not confuse that with the 74 companies getting tax exemption because tax exemption is for business income. Yeah, right. Now, so this, in, this, in, is, this is not for, business income. No, no, this is not sure. business income. So yeah. for in 2016, the government scrapped the angel tax only for eligible yeah. startups, i.e. startups that had registered with the DIPP. Yes, eligible yes, startups are exempt provided they obtain a certificate from the Interministerial yes. Board of Certification no, indicating no, 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 no. that it is an eligible business. Yes, eligible business, yeah. that's all, but it's not about tax. You see, there are two sections. One, you have to be an eligible business and you get it in three days saying you're a startup. Sure. You give the information. Sure. Other one is you have to apply separately for tax benefits. Okay. And that is done by a separate uh, separate committee. And that is only for income from business. Okay. Now, if they add back this angel tax, it will not be income from business. Right. It goes under income from other sources. Okay. So the... I would, uh, I would suggest to CGS immediately apply, get a registration, show it to the income tax officer. Because CGS, have you done that day. already? Have you attempted to do that have, or have you done that already? We have already registered almost a year back with uh, DIPP and we have shared that. Okay. And as, then, they as can't, as Mr. Just, Pai, then this will not apply to you. Then this will not apply but he's to being, you. That's what he's trying to say, uh, Mr. Uh, Pai, that yeah, he's been trying to explain that. Yeah, but probably we need to go to an appeal and we need to go to appeal and then no, no, we need to go in the appeal. It, it will be a perverse order. You go meet the commissioner and tell him, look, it is against the law what is being done because you can't do this. The, the notification is very clear that once you are registered, you can't do it. I think you have to show them that you have been registered, you are okay. under the law. If you want to send me an email immediately and I'll tell you how to represent, all right? Shri that Jeet, that so would be great. Please, yeah. please contact Mr. Pai. Uh, and Mr. Pai, thanks very much for offering to help Shri Jit here on CNBC TV 18. Ashish Fafadia, let me ask you, uh, you know, have you seen a let up in, in the notices that have been sent out? Are you seeing more clarity emerge on the ground as Mr. Pai is suggesting that there is now much more sensitization on the ground post his tweet? Uh, so, uh, to be uh, uh, fair, uh, I'm sure that some certain circles or certain officers are acting upon it. Uh, but I am not, uh, we are in the midst of some of our companies which are having this challenge. Okay. But we have not yet seen much uh, action on that. So you haven't seen any relief coming your way. What exactly are the questions being asked of you? Where are you finding the problem? Uh, Srijit is uh, trying to get them to, A, understand the fact that he's already part of the DIPP program. Uh, and, of course, there are issues with respect to how they've arrived at the valuation. Where are you facing trouble? So uh, the, there, are, there are two parts of the whole thing. The post clarification of 2016 and the uh, one that of prior. So cases which are prior and which are in the process of assessment or scrutiny uh, there and these companies which apply to the clarification of 16, uh, there, there is a larger issue that is continuing. Uh, so far as companies have proposed that uh, phase, we are yet to uh, get into scrutiny and assessment. Okay. So I am hoping that uh, some of these uh, attention uh, alarming uh, yeah. Uh, can definitely be helpful and people in the government will take note, we'll take note of that. The issues, we are trying to get yeah. them to appreciate the fact that uh, while the DCF or not, the more fundamental issue is that some of these things should not be taken up at all because there's no chance that the startups are going to uh, get to any zone or half a and all that. Right. So fundamental issue. Right. Uh, let me let me uh, go across to Amarjeet Singh, partner at KPMG. Uh, Amarjeet, you know, the budget is upon us now. Uh, you've been listening in to what our panel is saying, and there is clearly confusion that exists on the ground. What is it that you would uh, like to see by way of clarification from the government? See, Shireen, I was involved in the startup policy of the government and these all these provisions which have come in terms of exemption for startup, etc., I think I worked very hard to get those exemptions. Uh, and it was very surprising that after giving the exemption, the tax department has actually started chasing some of these uh, startups for doing this uh, adjustment. Mm. Mm. In fact, I have actually received two uh, clean orders in last three weeks okay. on similar matter because I was seized of this uh, issue uh, for, for a long time because... People are not aware that this issue had been picked up, and I have also faced some. One, I have also obtained a positive ITAT ruling okay. on very similar issue okay. uh, around six to eight months back. Right. So, uh, as far as the budget is concerned, see, uh, startups. A lot of these benefits have gone, hmm. but unfortunately, the problem is that the definition of startup talks about 
that the that the entity has been set up after April 16 and up to uh, April 2019. Yeah. There are a lot of these startups which have actually been um, existent for some time. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who are facing most of the issues right now. Right. Because uh, their assessments are getting over. Yeah. And these kind of issues are being raised. Right. And the kind of, you know, if I just look at the show cause notice which had been issued to my client. Yeah. The kind of things they said that we do not believe on your assumptions. Yeah. Your basis of valuation is irrational. Yeah. And it is completely unrelated to your actual financial position. Yeah, that's pretty much what Srijit has also had to yes, deal yes. with. I mean, he's, he's also been accused of converting black to white, for instance, for investors. Srijit, am I right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so just to I mean, concur with Mr. what Mr. Singh told, probably we fall in the category because we uh, we are in existence before 2016 and we received the notice in early 2000, in, um, in late of 2015. So probably we are in the cusp and as such yeah. probably this confusion. But at least I have around 40, 50 folks who have been throughout the day who have gone to the same ordeal and they are all yeah. now for appeal we need to pay 20 percentage of the amount. For so, I mean, in my case, I need to pay 8 lakh rupees upfront yeah. and then go for an appeal. Yeah. That's yes. insane. Okay. Um, uh, Amarjeet, uh, uh, quickly respond to what we've heard here on this program, not just today, but uh, ever since Mr. Pai has been tweeting about this issue. And again, specifically, what needs to change on the ground? Because the, the policy, as you said, is well-intentioned. You worked on it. But clearly, the message to the tax department uh, hasn't, hasn't uh, uh, made its mark. See, the point is, uh, what needs to be told to the tax office is uh, the valuation of Amazon of 700 plus trillion uh, billion today, market cap, is not based upon the net asset value of that company. It's based upon a lot of lot more things which are intangible. Similarly, for a number of startups, mm. when somebody puts in money into that particular company, they gave it based upon the team structure. They yeah. based upon the pedigree of the promoters, based upon the product which is being developed and the right. possibility of commercialization. So they, it, the DCF valuation methodology itself is so subjective. Mm. It is based upon certain factors which cannot be actually explained also a number of times. Right. So therefore, you know, the tax department has to at least trust the valuer. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we are using credible valuers whenever yeah. we do a DCF valuation. Yeah. And he cannot go on NAV and he cannot sure. mistrust my assumption. He cannot mistrust. You know, the, one of the clauses which was said in that notice was the SESI has relied on marketing research data which has not been published by the government. Yeah. Now the government has not published yes. data. We rely on data produced by various other... Yeah, yeah. Areas. Sure. You know, we're going to keep this conversation going, but, uh, but the final word to you, Mr. Pai, you know, there is a trust deficit that exists. There is a mismatch or a misalignment in terms of understanding of uh, issues uh, around valuation of startups. Uh, where do we go from here? Specifics that you would like perhaps the budget to address by way of clarification. Yeah, first, first one correction, which I think Shitish can check up. The angel tax exemption is also for companies before 2016. 2016 to 19 is only for tax exemption for business income. For the angel tax, you need to register before the date to mm. get registered with DIPP. Then you are entitled not to have angel tax trust on you. So I think that he has to check up. We have done it in other companies. And I would suggest the government comes in amendment to say, all they have to do is verify whether the investors have put money into the company out of tax paid income. Mm. That means their PAN should be there. It must yeah. be reflected in the balance sheet. Yeah. That's all they must inquire. Mm. And they must not inquire the valuation. Valuation mm. means, you know, valuation is between two people and they're putting money. Yeah. So long as I'm putting my tax paid money, why is anybody bothered what the valuation is? Mm. It's absurd to say the value is this or that because the tax officer doesn't have the competence to decide the valuation. Yeah. Valuation between two people, between a knowledgeable seller, knowledgeable buyer sure. of the stock and the knowledgeable seller of the stock. Mm. So I think government must amend the law to do it with the government for the satisfaction of the tax officer and just say the tax officer can inquire as to the uh, as to the source of money to ensure that it is tax paid money. Tax paid money. If you pass that, and that is very legitimate, that is yeah. very correct. Yeah. And if they do that, I think this problem will go away. Like you said, Sherry, in the beginning, Tax officers don't know how to evaluate, how to do valuation for all the startups. Mm. Because startups get valuation based on a number of factors. Most mm. of it is by negotiation. Right. So I think even if you have valuations by negotiations, so I think they must do away with that clause.
That's All what right. we expect in the budget. All right. Uh, bring in that amendment in the budget. Mohandas Pai, Shrijit here is wishing you the very best of luck. Ashish Fafadia and Amarjit Singh, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, and we do hope that this matter will be resolved with the clarifications, perhaps by way of the budget. On that note, it's time for us to wrap up this special broadcast. Thanks very much for watching. Don't go anywhere. We've got a very special show lined up.